I am error says, doesn't uh, Watsy's statement sounds like it was written by a PR firm and lots of doublespeak? No, it does not. I think a PR firm would do a much better job. I was about to say, if it's written by a PR firm, it's a terrible one. It, it sounds like somebody who doesn't really know exactly how the license work works did it because, and I'm purely speculating, the communications team refused to do it. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that's interesting. Yeah, but it's how, it, it does seem like it was put together. Like if the, if there was going to be a big announcement and then that was changed at three o'clock yesterday and this was put out at like nine o'clock or something like that, it seems like, oh my God, we've got to say something. And this is what was written overnight by perhaps, yes, somebody doesn't know what they were doing. Not yeah. a legal, yeah, not a PR team. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm looking Sorry, for questions. Walter. Lots of Sorry. stuff going by. I, I'm not looking. I mean, lots of great comments. I see lots of great comments here. I was looking yeah. for questions. I see uh, two super chats. So let's just uh, let's go to those. Uh, Walter. Oh wait, hold on. Let's go up. Uh, oh, here we go. Uh, oh, a super sticker. Uh, Claudia McPhee, uh, New Zealand. Thank you so much for the super sticker. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and then Walter Star. Walter with the open D and D logo right here. Uh, Walter says. What the hell did they think would happen when they pissed off thousands of people who are technologically astute and read 600 page rule books for fun? <laughs> okay, I can tell you what they thought would happen. I can tell you what they hope would happen. Okay. What they hope would happen is that they would get a bunch of companies like Paizo and Cobalt and other companies of that size to agree to these licensing terms. And then they would make an announcement and say, look, we have a new open gaming license and all these companies have decided to join us and come with us on our new adventure. That's what they hoped would happen. And instead, everybody ostracized them. And yeah, they the exactly. Them. But look, they what they wanted. They wanted what Paizo got yesterday. That's what they wanted. Yeah. Yeah. There's got to be some uh, the PR section of that has got yeah, like Paizo stole their thunder and all that. Yeah. Harlequin seventy four for five dollars. Thank you so much for the super chat. This whole post by Wizards of the Coast sounds like some bean counter exec trying to save his job and still not commit to anything. Yeah, it's it's middle management speak. It's yeah, it's um, yeah, you can just imagine that there's somebody trying to write this thing, and they're trying to write it in a way that doesn't piss off people above them that have given them orders or are expecting certain things, and deals with what I believe is a fairly substantial revolt on the people below them, telling them they're making a horrendous mistake and trying to get them to stop. I mean, this message is full of tension. It is. This is a message that is being pulled like taffy from the top and the bottom. Uh, I can't help but feel like I hear that line from Iron Man from Jeff Bridges going, <laughs> they built a license in a cave. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, exactly. We've right? got a multi-billion dollar corporation and yes. they're tearing us apart. <laughs> yeah, yes. It's, yes. It's got to be unbelievably frustrating. Yeah. The, the UFO man is a regular here and sent a super sticker for uh, one one ninety nine. Thank you so much, the UFO man. So it's great to see you. Uh, Pilgrim uh, Media says so. The leak, so the self leak was a uh, Watsy Endgame. I, you know, I'm not convinced it was a self leak. I believe a number of companies were shown various documents in the lead up to this, and I, I, I don't know. I don't know anybody. I don't know any 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 part of what how it got out there. But assuming it was leaked from Wizards, I think is a mistake. That's a bad assumption. It might be true, but it's a bad assumption. Yeah, we yeah we don't know the source of the leak. Yeah, that's right. Which is hopefully maybe we won't probably better, but yeah. So, but some people have speculated self leak, but we don't know. I, I mean, it seems like my idea was that if it was a self leak, if that strategy was, hey, let's leak something terrible and then set ourselves up for heroism, then come in with no. This is if they were setting themselves up for heroism, they would have responded a lot faster than that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Christina McCall for $5 says, I've been playing and running the game since AD&D, spent thousands of dollars, recruited so many other people. I feel totally betrayed. Yep. It's a part of your lifestyle. You identify yourself as a DD and d player. It's who you and, are. I, and I remember somebody, this is not original to me, but, I, but the idea about having um, older cousins or older brothers in the game to bring new people in and invite people. And if you drive off those people... Yeah, Ryan, I want to ask you about that because that to me is a huge problem that the way this is sustained is people teaching other people. I think Absolutely. very few people probably just buy the box and learn to play. Yeah, 
I mean, look, uh, the, the size of the Dungeons & Dragons audience today is, is bigger than I ever imagined it could be. And that's mm -hmm. because they've done a great job at new player acquisition. I mean, all kudos to Wizards and everybody else in an ecosystem who has worked on that problem down through the years, right? There are just more people playing tabletop role-playing games today than I ever thought was possible. So that all worked. But part of the infrastructure inside of that social network are people willing to teach other people how to play. It is incredibly hard to learn how to play Dungeons & Dragons out of a box, mm -hmm. really hard. I sat on the other side of one-way mirrors in market research studios and watched people try to do that with Pokemon Junior, a game that was designed for six to eight-year-olds, and they had a hard time doing it. I cannot imagine how hard it is to learn how to play Dungeons & Dragons without somebody teaching you how to play. Severin asks, uh, do you think for $5, thank you so much. Thank you very much for Super Chat. Also, one of the regulars on the channel. Do you think the situation was big enough to have consequences to those in higher position, board changes, et cetera, or do you feel it's business as usual? It probably doesn't reach into Hasbro corporate, but it, there's no telling how high it could reach inside Wizards of the Ghost. <laughs> Especially if we start seeing in Hasbro stock price and, and if it, if it, this yeah. I suppose this is the other side of, of saying, which we've talked about before, that do we really want everybody to be involved in our hobby and it yeah. to be mainstream popular? Well, right. you know, be careful what you wish for. So we're seeing it. On the other hand, if Wall Street does notice and this is terrible, that would could be cutting the other direction. Yeah. Yep. We have let's reason together has sent a fifty dollar super chat. Thank wow. you so much for the super chat. Uh, he says you are killing me. Ryan gets source code. He knows the meat is on the SRD data. It's thin in a new OCR, the ORC license that allows the greatest protection. Oh, this, it's this in a new ORC license that allows the greatest protection and he knows, and also the greatest reuse. Linux, ad, Linux admin sent 19, since 1995. This is an easy problem to solve. Do you understand what's being said here? I don't, sorry. I wish I, for $50, I wish I could give you a better response, but I don't get it. You yeah, know, I know. Been quite a bit. I think, though, what, what I've seen him saying, and I'm sure he'll correct us if I'm wrong, because I've watched his post flying by. Um, he's been desperate for us to talk about this. That okay. the, the reality is that the source code, the open source community has dealt with exactly these problems. But, Ryan, I think, let me know what you think. I, I mean, it sounds like what you're saying is that we do have a good license. We do have a good system. We have people who think they can override it and they can't. And that's kind of the underlying problem right now is that it's not so much that we don't have a good way to share this, it's that we've got people who think they can get rid of it. I, I, I just, I, I mean, I just want to reiterate, like I'm really not focused on what happens next yet. I'm just not, yeah. I can't let myself be. There is gonna be a what comes next, but I'm not there yet. So I'm not saying anything about what's coming next. I'm not trying to say it's good or bad or, or what. I'm just saying I'm not there yet. I wanna try and win this battle right now to get wizards to do the right thing about 1.0a and then i'll have lots of things to say about what happens next right. i think well, that's what i was saying is that 1.0a is a good license yes it is a good license. It's worked perfectly and, good for 22 years really yeah, good for license yeah. yeah and look in the end it's it's not struggling because it turned out to be a bad license it ha it's not there's no licensing issue here at all none mm -hmm. I, I, so b before we started I, I mentioned that i always thought there could be problems with the open gaming license maybe we should talk about that the open gaming license doesn't talk about patents and patents are a dangerous thing. Patents are a whole different kind of intellectual property than copyrights or trademarks. And they're not discussed in the open gaming license at all. And in the software world, they basically had to revise all of the core software open source licenses to deal with the threat of patent litigation. There are patents in tabletop gaming. Wizards of the Coast had one, um, a, a huge one, a really important one on, on the magic game mechanic. So yeah. in, in, in the other gaming industry, the gambling industry, they call themselves the gaming industry. I always laugh yeah. at them, they're the gambling yeah. industry. Patents are <laughs> everywhere. Everything you see in a casino is patented. And before you can do any work in that space, you usually have to cross-license a big portfolio of patents. We don't have patents in tabletop industry that affect tabletop role-playing games, thankfully. And it's unlikely that will start. It could start, but it's unlikely it will start. But if we ever did have a patent problem, the open gaming license would not be a good defense against it. There's just nothing in the open gaming license about patents. So. Like, that's the kind of thing. That's the kind of orthogonal thing. I'm using orthogonal because we're all gamers. That's something that could come from a direction completely outside of the vector that which the open gaming license is aimed that could have really done it damage. And I'm sure there's other things. But that didn't happen. Like, it didn't happen. It worked fine. It's been working fine for 22 years. And 
when we were doing analysis earlier this week and trying to run down and document different things, I I did a lot of people in my comments uh, were giving examples from the uh, GPL, the general public license. And then, of course, you've talked about in other ones how this was inspired by that philosophy. And so we did look I did go back and look at GPL version one because I thought, gee, if, if the language or something is used, we'll be able to document that. There's got to have been also case law or litigation or something like that. Where some because if if that idea that it was built on because it's building on the the GPL and the source code, if there was some huge flaw on that, it's probable that it would have been found before then. Because I, I didn't realize that the GPL until I was looking into it, it had started so long ago. I mean, that was still had like a t- twenty or thirty year head start on the open gaming license. That's right. So. And that's yeah. why I was also saying that no, if something happened to this, something we invented, we built on the shoulders of giants. Absolutely, hundred percent. Would never claim that any part of the open gaming license or the concept of open gaming was original to us. Yeah, it's all based on stuff that came from open source software. And so yeah, that's why I was also saying that if something happened here, it seems like it would back propagate to a whole bunch of other people who might really want to claw back something that was open, something you know that the web runs on or something like that, yeah. and. Yep. It just seems like no. So let's reason together. I hope that was a reasonable answer for that. I hope that uh, I hope you got. Uh, hope we addressed the concerns. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Building Persephone uh, for five uh, pounds says: Is there any coincidence that the former Microsoft executives are replying that uh, replaying the total embarrassment of Firefox and Linux? <sighs> You really have to wonder if a bunch of people who came from a culture who fought this battle and lost it 15, 20 years ago don't have the institutional knowledge to not fight it again. Like, <laughs> I would actually expect people from Microsoft to not want to touch this with a 10-foot pole, to use a mm-hmm. D&D analogy. Like, they know better. Yeah. Okay. Uh, mine, Minecraft uh, Dungeon of... Or no, Minecraft Dungeon version two. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for a five dollar super chat. I wanted to thank Ryan and YouTubers for everything they are doing to help this community. Your succinct and clear, unbiased responses are amazing. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's things like this. It's like the, the the kind of content that you're putting out here today is the kind of content the community needs to hear and understand these issues because they're fairly complicated and there's a rich history here, and they need to know what's being fought over and why it matters to them. So I really appreciate you taking the time to do something like this. Well, thank you for being here. And also, you impressed, I know everybody, it seems like in the gaming community, when you appeared on the uh, the role for combat, we're like, wow, this guy like told us exactly what we need to know, exactly like uh, uh, like they're talking about here, succinctly, un- uh, unbiasedly, directly, well-articulated, and all of that. And we're like, wow. <laughs> That's what I, I, like, I got to ask you. Not normal. Hey, <laughs> thank you for having me. <laughs> I want to thank you for having me on this too, because the truth is, is that I hope that I am appropriately representing the yeah. thousands of folks out there who are developing stuff like me. Absolutely, and we're just the small folks trying to do something cool. And like someone put in here, it says, "Really, our our position is just leave us alone. Um, we just want to make our cool stuff, right, and not have you mess with it." And so, thanks yeah. for having me on this, because generally, our voices end up getting lost in this, and I appreciate it a lot. Well, you're welcome, Mark. You know, for those who might be new to the channel, our kind of philosophy here that I try to operate under is to, to always be constructive. I don't like mm-hmm. endless negativity and stuff like that. So I like to be constructive and uh, focus on building things and, and things like that. So I hope that it, this is a constructive conversation that is being had here um, and advancing the conversation in the geek verse about this topic. So hopefully that is what we are doing. Uh, abstract Tractor. For five Canadian says, I've always imagined that uh, that trust in companies is hard to earn and easy to lose. How much yeah. do you think consumer trust affects Watsi's bottom line? A lot. A lot. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I mean, I agree. A huge amount. Thank you so much for the super chat. Jason A says for five dollars says critical role. We haven't talked about them yet, which uh, we can talk about them now, but we can also talk about them later. But let's address this question. Jason A says critical role must feel like they're behind between a rock and a hard place. Is there anything they can say or uh, say or are they too intertwined with what's Wizard of the Coast? I mean, I can't speak for those guys. I don't I don't know Matt Mercer. I don't know his team. I, I would feel really badly to say something that wasn't true. So I, I won't say anything. Hmm. Yeah, that's another one that is is difficult because I know people, I mean, there has been a a tweet that's come out, but I think you're probably right that they probably feel 
between a rock and a hard place. And they might really be, they could be really be legally, which is why they haven't said anything. So they might, they probably do feel that way, I would guess. And they might actually be legally. I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm sure that it's a hard, what they're going through is not easy. Yep. And look, they're, they're not the only ones. Like, let's be clear. There are lots and lots and lots of people that are facing those choices. And it is a tough time for them. And I really do feel for those people. Like, they have to make decisions that affect human beings, lives. It's not theoretical. It's not, it's not just about games. It's about people. And I really, really, really feel for those people. Uh, I do see Let's Reason Together did say, th I'm not sure if that was a thanks directed at us or not, but I just saw that come by. There's a lot of comments. So I, I hope that that we addressed your, your comment uh, well. Um, Mark J for $10. Thank you so much for the super chat. And thank you for being here. It says, WotC has been abusing uh, and over monetizing Magic the Gathering for years. And at this point, I don't trust leadership. Uh, that leadership there has the fans at heart. The problem for them is D&D is it has fewer attack vectors and OGL protects its fans. Look, the, I, I kind of disagree, Mark. Like, they, they, the OGL is not protecting them from making money from Dungeons and Dragons. It's not. Like, there's so many things they could do with Dungeons and Dragons to make money that have nothing to do with the open gaming license. They, they've done some of those things. They're probably going to do more in the future. But the OGL is not a part of that. Like, it's not stopping them from monetizing their brands. Uh, and I am the most casual Magic the Gathering player either. I've heard there have been terrible, so I don't really know what's going over there. I've heard that there was, was stuff that flew on, which is off topic for here. But I heard there's a bunch of stuff over there in that community, and now this is coming over here. Uh, <laughs> Jacob Hart for $5 says, Ryan, what's your take on the critical role silence? I think yeah. we we addressed that, we that saying. we just don't know. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, oh, Let's reason together. Thank you. Thank you. Send a uh, $1 super chat. Thank you very much. Uh, the Oka, uh, the Okota cat says, would you have been, uh, yeah. what would have been the smart move for Wizards of the Coast? Well, when? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then we'll go on to the next topic. Like, what would have been the smart move this morning? What, yeah. The smart move would have said, we, exactly what Paizo said. That would be the smart move. Yeah. That was the smart move yesterday. That was the smart move a week ago. That the, was the smart move this morning. That should be the smart move tomorrow morning. Yeah, there's only one thing that's going to make the pain stop. You must clearly declare that they do not intend to be authorized and they can't revoke that license. That's the only thing that will stop the pain at this point. Now, what should they have done six months ago if they really wanted to engage in this process? I can, I mean, I could give you a roadmap. If Wizards wants to hire me to tell them what they should have done, I'd be happy to pay, <laughs> take their pay to tell them. It's silly to do that now. Now they have to have a whole new strategy. They have a completely different problem than they had six months ago. 